Hi! In the last video, I showed you how to style your rooftop, which is basically this profile, the section of your m rooftop model. And today is a little different um, because we're going to do the plan. And what this is going to do is uh, conform the rooftop traveling around your house plan and basically your wall plan. Now there's a hundred ways to do this and there's no one right way. So what I'm trying to do here is show you the tools so that you can make your own decisions. If you didn't watch the last tutorial on sections, you did miss a lot of stuff. I've made this kind of a custom, uh, custom shape node to be our section. And it started off as a dome shape, but I've added on extra parameters. That's a normal way to work with Archimatics. So we're going to keep in that flow. Now what I did to simplify last time was I used Lathe to provide the, the rooftop's plan. And Lathe is just a symmetrical uh, circular or well, radial plan generator. And you might wonder why I didn't just use, you know, like the circle uh, and probably what is everybody's favorite node, a plan sweep. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you the differences in uh, using lathe uh, as your plan or using a plan sweep as your plan, because as we move into this, that's sort of arbitrary. <laughs> well, you'll see, let's get into it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, route our, our, our roof section that we made last time into, uh, into the, oops, come on. I don't know which uh, computer I'm, I'm working on, sorry. <laughs> Alright, what I want to do is, I made this little wall just to be fancy. Let me turn that off. It's not actually attached to anything. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to just um, match up these materials. So one of the differences here, <laughs> obviously, is that I'm basically, you know, creating a shape in one node. Here I need two nodes, and it's not the same shape. Let's let's wire this up so that, um, you know, I'm basically creating the same thing. Over here on our shape, we have, well, the circle shape anyway. We have radius, and that's kind of analogous to our oculus. And uh, over here on the lathe we have segs and that's going to be analogous to our shape nodes, the circles segs. Now all I have to do is kind of let me just close this, oh wait a minute actually, uh, let me slide this out of the way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to match up our segs, right? Four. We matched up the oculus. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the circle node is doing with that strange maybe that's a good idea to use lathe instead of a circle node but I'm just you know just just saying just putting that out there all right with the oculus closed it's basically the same as closing our circle shape and the circle is blocked from going completely to zero otherwise it would just disappear but you can see that this is the same, right? This is the same. So essentially using a lathe 
is the same as using a circle and a plan sweep, but as you can see, there's occasionally fewer strange <laughs> calculation problems. Now, what, what, what was going on there? Yeah, I don't know what that blinking is. This is something new that uh, that Archimatics and Unity are doing at me. I don't know why. As you can see, it happens at certain points. So you could probably control it or exit out. But if you just use lathe, you don't have to worry about it. All right, that's kind of off topic, though. <laughs> now, if I have the high segments here, and remember I showed you that there are these controls, faceted, continuous U. Well, those sort of exist, sort of. If we follow our plan, input on the plan sweeper we have these these breakpoints and one is the geometry and one is the normals so the normals is kind of analogous to faceted and the geometry is analogous to yeah i don't really know what i don't think there's an equivalent maybe continuous u i'm not sure but as you see, when this breaks down, four. Oh, there we go. All right. If I if I cross this geometry break line, now how many segs do I have? I only have twelve segs. So this is not like a you know crazy high poly model. But by moving this breakpoint <laughs> uh, too high, and, you know, I'm guilty of this all the time, I will, you know, just jump into this setting and I'll just, you know, set it up to the highest that I can do. Thinking that that's going to get me the best results. No. <laughs> no. So this is like severe UV stretching. Which, you know, it would never happen on our lathe shape. Now, chances are, yeah, you're not going to use a circle anyway. So, uh, let's start using, you know, some actual plans. This is where we're going. So, I'm going to go ahead and just turn off this old lathe. And we're, we're going to ignore this lathe from now on. Now, now, while I'm at it, let me turn off that little, my little dormer window from the last tutorial as well. Okay. Now, <coughs> for the next hour, <laughs> I'm going to be just um, playing with plans and the same section shape. So if you have your own section shape, go for it. You can use the, the regular dome node. Uh, if you did the last tutorial, go ahead and use that node because we're actually going to build on it a little more. But for starters, I need to show you um, a couple of things that we're going to start with uh, in just a generic way of working with plans. And to do that, I'm gonna gonna do something that I would not normally build with unless I was um, kind of doing a uh oh where'd you go okay it remembered that I touched that last little dormer node so it conveniently put this over there by the dormer node. <laughs> I'm just gonna connect this free curve now what I was saying was Free curve is super convenient when you are stamping architecture. It's not uh, terribly useful when you are trying to make parametric architecture. Parametric meaning that you know it's going to build itself based on a few like procedural parameters. As long as you're fully in control, free curve is fast. Use it. Like let's look how this goes. All right, so I'm going to just. Uh, give me some space here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think I'm actually going to go this direction. I'll zoom out and I'm just going to add, add some free curve points. 
and we'll see what happens. And I'm just going to hit done. I'm not going to close the shape. I'm just going to hit done. And boom, right away. Uh, Yeah, we could just sit here and bang out, you know, rooftops one click at a time with the free curve. It's not going to get us parametric architecture, but you can build anything you need to build. But what I want you to notice while we're doing this, I'm going to jump up to the top overhead view and here is our free curve. Now, remember when we had the, the lathe and the circle shape? The circle shape had to be, like, basically almost closed. Like, the radius was, like, almost at zero. It was, like, 0 0.01. Because our roof built out. Right? So on our original section node, we've got this little origin point. And this origin point tells us what this line is constructing, okay? Where the roof is in relation to this plan. So this origin point is the plan. Make sense? All right, I'm going to delete the free curve. And instead, I'm going to use, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a rectangle. That's a shape that probably everybody's going to start with. All right, now what's going on? We've got an enormous roof and a little plan, because that roof exists on the outside of that plan and I am going to remember I had that caliper before I am going to route uh, our current plan into my little wall section let me take off orthographic and where are you oops and there you are <laughs> no what? That's not, not necessarily what we wanted, right? Maybe. Maybe that's what we wanted. Let me turn on the underside of this shape. Bottom cap. Where are you? Uh, there are there are buildings that do this. They just have a little roof, a ledge roof, you know, that pushes out from the from the wall, creating this overhang. That's not that's not probably not what we want. We want the roof to live on the inside. Brace yourselves for some parametrics, because that's what's coming. So, what is inside? Well, ooh, our rectangle has a width and a height. And let's just uh, play around with this. Now, probably normally what you would do is go into the transform and just move our translation X on the node to move that uh, roof to the other side of the plan, but look what happens. Now I'm, I'm holding on because I'm being careful. When our shapes... When the shape's start point crosses into negative space. It's not even negative space, it's null space. When it passes into the Mondo Biondo, our shapes fails, and worse than that, though, it takes the whole graph with it, right? Well, only temporarily, though. And I feel like what we want to do is have that 
uh, roof rest right on the rest right on that wall. So what that means is we need to make the width smaller. Now when we move that translation, uh, we can we can fit the it on the wall. This isn't this isn't like what we need is the roof width to match this, or rather the other way around. We need to uh, create a parametric that is going to match the roof width to the trans x. We know how to do that. I showed you in the last tutorial. We just create an expression under, potentially, under width, but in a parametric model, where are we deciding this width? Remember I told you last time, width should be uh, dependent on this span. So we already have a span. We want this span to be one of these sides, the shorter side. I'm going to create a new parameter right on my plan node. And we're going to call it span. So what I'm going to do is calculate Whichever wall is shorter, the width or the height, that's going to become my span. How do I do that? With expressions. So under the width, I'm going to create a, an expression. Span equals the lesser. of height and width. This is one of the math functions. Uh, I have a whole page of them on the community.archimatics.com. And just so you can see this all the way out. Span equals the lesser of height, comma, width. I'm going to copy that. And I'm also going to put it under the height. Uh, let's watch our span parameter and catch that in angle. Whatever is happening, it's going to switch over to the smaller. Okay. We have our span is now being trans now being calculated on the plan. So I'm going to route this span into our other node. Uh, what's this span doing? Something with the Oculus. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ignore the Oculus for now. Actually, I'll just set the Oculus to, a, yeah, something inconsequential, 0.01, that's fine. All right, so width equals span divided by 2. And one more. And now I've already lost most of you. But I am a completist, so you can't blame me if you don't learn this. <laughs> Trans x equals minus negative width. Here we 
ready for this? Don't explode. Alright, what's happening? Our plan shape, this rectangle. I've added a parameter. And whether I'm shifting the height or the width, both of these have expressions to calculate which one is smaller, the lesser, and that gets transmitted to this span parameter. My span parameter communicates over here onto my section node, and the span divides itself in half, sets the width minus the oculus, Remember our oculus is still there? <laughs> and then, the width moves our origin point to rest on this line. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to confuse you, but uh, I added another little thing. <laughs> I added another little parameter here. Once you start doing parameters, it gets very, very addictive. Which is, which is why I'm showing you how, how to make these parameters. I'm not trying to deliberately show you the hardest way to do this. That's why I went ahead and stopped <clears throat> before I just kept showing you this stuff. Um, basically, I added one more parameter. So I can have this little, like, eaves overhang just because it skeeves me out when the roof, like, comes right down on the wall. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You, there are easier ways to do this, uh, including, um, just, uh, changing the offset on a plan. All right, but like I said, I'm not trying to show you deliberately show you the hardest way to do this. All right, let's get back to the tutorial, which is about plans. So what I have now, <coughs> okay, is a self parametric. Uh, this kind of roof is called. I'm going to even simplify it further. So I'm going to take my. I'm going to take out the curve on this roof, and it's just going to be a little sharp triangle. In fact, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop the height a little. Are we, are we having fun? All right. Uh, this is the first closed roof. Now, re really, the the square. And the, the circle, the dome, and the pyramid from the last tutorial were the first roof. And those had one span, right? A circle or a square has is the same uh, top to bottom as left to right, right? But in a, uh, uh, in a hip roof... Well, you know, in a basic, like, railroad rectangular house structure, you have two spans. You've got the short span, and you've got the long span. And this is my patented uh, rule of Archimatics Parametrics. It's the short span rule, which is whatever wall is shorter becomes the span. Okay, I explained span in the last video. Span, 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 span. You got it. This is why. Why I made the uh, the parametrics on the plan node to figure out which was the shorter span because the short wall rule of parametric ref rooftops. Now, this is a very, very realistic, very realistic roof. Uh, under, and the idea is that uh, there's a set, um, the, uh, the rafters underneath 
are manufactured, you know, kind of all to the same length. So this is a very normal, very normal roof that you're going to see. And the next roof that you're going to see is going to take a little doing. I'm going to use a shape merger. How'd you jump over there? And I'm gonna uh, hmm, I don't want an instance. I want a duplicate of this shape. This is the one that we modified, right? Now check this, I'm going to wire the width into the height, the height into the width. I'm going to add this shape into the shape merger. Uh, pretty sure I want the union, but I'm just going to test this out first. I'm going to wiggle these a little. And I'm going to route the union into my plan. This is our second roof, or maybe the third roof. Oh! <laughs> uh, and what you see is we haven't changed the, uh, the instructions, the span, the short span rule is still working and we still have a fully covered roof so the plan of this roof is following right but because of that short span rule it doesn't matter this wall or this wall or even these little insets it's all gonna close up Okay, what this is called is a, a regular hip and valley. So the valleys are obviously the inside corners. The hips are the outside corners. But as long as you maintain that, that uh, you know, short span rule, the short wall rule of parametric roof spans, this works. And... Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. Like, they don't even have to be connected, and it still works. <laughs> Remember our dormer window from the last tutorial? The one that uh, we started with? Where is that? My graph is getting a little sloppy. I apologize. <laughs> I'm going to grab this mesh. I'm going to put it into a plan repeater. Not the corners. So. I think. And yeah, I'm getting a little sloppy. OK. 
Okay, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Where is my plan? <laughs> okay, that's a bit of a mess. Okay, we got too many windows. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> you see how fun! Where's my control? I think I'm going to quit <clears throat> while I'm ahead and go ahead and put this up online. Stay creative, everybody. Hope you learned something. And subscribe for the next video because we have more, more. Stick to the plan.